Come back, rebate, beat down the block in the verse. I'ma pull up, chopper, hit him, he hurt. Heavy bullets, nigga, you would get murked. All these niggas playing, leave him dead on the shirt. Is it working? Is it on? Hello? So yeah, I got a, I got a camera. So I'm gonna be making shitty ass content, but now I'll just be in a better quality. Anyway, so today I want to just go over different ways you can find the keys of your samples and then like further manipulate them. Cause some people need to realize how important it is to just make sure everything is in key, especially with like bass lines and 808s. You have to treat your 808 like an instrument. It's not just a sound that goes there. You have to treat it like it's a piano or any other type of instrument. So anyways, let's get started. So this is the sample we're gonna be trying to manipulate in this video. All right, so the first way and the way I like to do a lot, but I don't really rely on is using Edison. All right, so what we're going to do is record the sample into Edison. Before we start, we want to change this to on play. And now just turn on this record button here and just let the sample play. And as soon as I click play, it will start. So I just want like the first loop doesn't really matter. And now what you want to do is come over here and click this little thing. I don't know what it's called. And then you want to go to detect pitch regions. Now it won't always be 100% accurate, but it might be a few keys off, but it'll definitely give you a better idea of what key your sample is in or what keys they're using. So it's telling me I have keys in G, D, D sharp, G sharp. So I'm going to go and try and lay down my 808 with those keys and see if it sounds good. So my 808s are actually in the notes of G and G sharp, just like Edison told us. And this is how it sounds with the 808 so far. So that's how you use Edison. Another way I usually like to do is with my 808s. So since 808 is like a sub, it's kind of harder to hear the tone. So what you want to do is bring them up to really high octaves. And if you ever see anyone bringing their 808s up to really high octaves, it's because you could hear the tone better and you could try and find the key. You can also use this to find the key of your sample. So if you bring up to really high octaves and play it with your sample. <laughs> So obviously this is another good method, but for this one, you kind of have to build an ear for what sounds right. And putting it at a higher octave just allows this whole thing to just be easier. And don't forget, after you're done finding the correct keys, to bring it down back a few octaves. And... So those are the two ways that I usually find the key in my samples and the ways that work best for me. And I just want to show you guys a cool little trick you can do. So if we open back up Edison, we see that the keys G, D, D sharp, and G sharp are all in the sample. So what you can do now is lay down notes in those keys in various patterns and create like a new pattern to lay over it. So I'll show you an example. Because I knew what keys were in the sample, I was able to lay this melody over using those keys just in a different order so I could come up with like a new pattern. And this is how it sounds. So then I was able to manipulate it and change it and make it sound different and cool. And I added this little part. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that's that. That's basically how I manipulate my samples, find the keys of it, layer things on it. I hope this video helped. More videos on the way. Thank you guys for 3,000 subscribers. If you want the drums, the mixing I use in this, everything's in the description. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.